as a Christian, how do I respond when my family or friend group is split politically? My short answer, announced right here, Lisa Turkhurst for president. <laughs> well, I mean, hey, is there anything else? Okay, that there? one came out of the blue. But that Thank one, you, Jim. you shocked all of us on that one. Well, okay. I mean, speaking of shock, let's go there. I mean, that was my attempt to be funny. If, are we really shocked anymore about the culture and the environment? So how, no matter what the question is, it's a mess out there right now. America is in what I call that trauma limbic brain and limbic responses of fight, flight, or freeze, seemingly mainly fight. So to really, really acknowledge where, in essence, the culture is, including maybe just our friends or family, can be like, it's this is not where it used to be even 20, 30 years ago. It's a very volatile playing field right now. Okay. That's yeah. for me to acknowledge this is really, I think, unprecedented times. Yeah, I, I think we need a guide. Mm -hmm. So we need a guide to help us. It's a topic I've been studying for the last two and a half years, and y'all are going to be like, Joel, for real, is this what you're going to say? And I'm going to say it, and I'm going to try to defend it just a little bit. Uh, we need humility. We yeah. desperately need humility in this conversation. Humility is a protection, a prevention, and a preservation. Humility protects us from thinking too low of ourselves. Mm -hmm. It prevents us from thinking too high of ourselves, and it preserves us in the life of Christ. So when we apply humility to the conversation of politics and disagreement, mm -hmm. what humility I think is going to allow us to do is to have um, this deep sense of confidence in our conviction, mm -hmm. compassion in the way that we communicate, and above all, it always reminds us that you and I are committed to the kingdom of God at all costs. Um, and so if we can frame our relationships and our conversations through that lens of humility, uh, I think it's going to lead to healthy relationships, and will help us know when we ought to speak and when we ought to might be hesitant. I think that's really good. For me, I have to first ask myself the question, do I have the emotional capacity to have this kind of conversation good. right now? Mm -hmm. And if I don't have the emotional capacity, I need to be honest that I don't really want to say things that I could potentially regret later or I need to do a little more research on this. That's good. And so if you don't have the emotional capacity or you don't feel like you're informed enough, it's okay to hit the pause button and say, let's revisit this another time. But if you do have the emotional capacity to talk about it, I think taking a big step back instead of making assumptions why this person believes the way that they do, and you've taught me this, Jim, get curious, not furious, mm -hmm. and start asking questions. Like, help me understand that perspective a little better. Or help me understand the story in your life that kind of got you to that place. Not accusing, not making assumptions, mm -hmm. but really truly getting the desire to connect with that person heart to heart, even if you never agree on the issues. Because here's what I know, we're all very divided sometimes in the way we think about things, our mm -hmm. political views, even our interpretation of scripture. But we can be very united in our tears. We can be very united in the hurts that have gotten us to the place where we believe like we believe, the compassion that we have for certain things, the righteous anger we have about other things, mm -hmm. the need for justice. You know, those are places where if we can take a step back and, and, and not so much fight to try to talk someone else into our political view, but rather take a step back and just say, help me understand what got you to this place. That's not you watering down what you believe, mm. but that's truly providing a pathway for actual healthy conversation. 